uh, some, some folks were offline uh, due to um, various emergencies. So we finally have gotten our passwords. And so we'd like to get started on the defending the island, how to protect your customers and your brand from being a victim of card skimming. Um, and uh, we'll uh, get moving along here because we have quite a bit of things to cover today. Uh, some process rules as we go along in the in the uh, webinar. Um, the uh, by attending, you agree to uh, abide by Connexus's antitrust and intellectual property rules found at the www.connexus.org website. Uh, participants will be put on mute for the duration of this presentation. Um, you will um, um, be asked if you have any questions, and we hope, certainly hope that you do, uh, we ask that you text in any of the questions using the questions text function in the control panel at the side of your screen. Uh, and you will receive an email cop, uh, to complete a survey after this presentation. You'll be able to access a presentation download, a copy of the presentation, after you complete the survey. The folks who are on the call, uh, and I'm going to turn this over to Kara uh, Gunderson, POS Manager with Citgo Petroleum, to uh, review the folks who will be presenting to you today. Thanks, Gray. So welcome, everybody. And again, our apologies for the late start today, but we've got a great panel of, of experts here today. We have Tim Weston from Wayne Fueling Systems. We have Luke Grant with Gilbarco Vita Root, as well as Doug Spencer from NAX. So let me start off by um, talking about um, Conexus and what Conexus does. Conexus is an independent nonprofit organization uh, comprised of expert volunteers, and we spend all of our time looking out for the industry uh, from a technology perspective and shaping how we can better do business through use of technology uh, in our industry. We set standards, certainly, uh, data exchange standards uh, from our, our genesis back in 1996 when we uh, first started with uh, uh, interface a POS to a back office. Uh, we now have a full sl uh, suite of standards that connect virtually every site system in stores and is being used by virtually every, every store that's out there today with an integrated uh, point of sale and retail IT system. Uh, we also set standards when it comes to data security and payments and best practices. Um, we've been engaged since 2009 in interpreting the PCI standards, making them uh, usable, readable, and implementable within our industry, and also within uh, the payments industry, um, working with smoothing out how payments flow from a point of sale or from a fuel dispenser uh, back and get authorized and, uh, and complete the transaction. In 2012, we took on an additional mission, which was to, uh, we took over the, the technology uh, uh, view for, from uh, NAX. And uh, we now provide, uh, and we look into the future on emerging technologies, and we provide technology content to NAX uh, for their show, as well as uh, for the members of the Connexus organization. And we identify those, those uh, technologies that might best suit our industry, and we're looking further and further down the road as technology becomes more and more important uh, to the function of our stores. We advocate for the industry on multiple planes. Um, we advocate to uh, external organizations such as X9, uh, the World Wide Web Consortium, which is the uh, standards body that determines how the web functions, and uh, we also advocate uh, to regulators, such as the Federal Reserve System, on how payments are used in retail and in our industry specifically. Most importantly, though, we, we improve profitability. Otherwise, we wouldn't exist, and, and we're working on our 20th year of, of operations. Um, we believe that we've saved the industry billions of dollars in redundant programming and interfacing uh, and in uh, implementation of uh, data security and payment systems upgrades. So I wanted to start this, uh, the, the discussion on skimming with a brief video clip that came from ABC Nightline. You are watching what police say is a new breed of credit card thief caught on tape. They say that guy is searching for a so-called skimmer device installed inside this gas pump in Arizona, stealing your credit card info when Here comes our producer, Leon Spygat. He swipes his credit card and he 
casinos, or the gas station owner knows, crooks could be stealing from him right then, and they put the skimmer inside the pump, silently harvesting his credit card information. He has no way of knowing. This is now a multi-billion dollar a year problem. That's what I found mine when you took off the This is looking like this, you can't see it. Looks like a new matchbox and that's it. It was stuck on one side to the middle. The skimming device banned inside and on that pump sat there for months. He had no idea. Stand to Felipe is a reformed credit card hacker. Then spent two years training agents to tell them how to do this giving. It's very easy and it's a lot of fun. And you can make tons of money. Gas station skimming is one of the easiest and best ways of doing it because it's hidden and it only takes seconds to open it up and put it in there. So this is the reader that would be inside the gas pump, and so you would just swipe it through and it would read it right here. So you would just add this into the circuit. That's exactly it. What you would do is you would unplug this. And you'll just take the skimmer and plug it right back in. Nobody will know the difference. <laughs> How do they get into those pumps? Believe it or not, there's a universal key that opens most gas pump doors. That's a universal key. Uh, it's the same key from uh, Massachusetts all over California. You can buy one online. And some of the newer devices actually use the cell phone network to transmit the data. So a bad guy can nab your credit card numbers without ever risking a return to the past. These days, skimmers have a new way of turning stolen credit cards into cash. That's a normal truck on the rail. Yeah. Now it's not such a good This is about a 300 gallon container, homemade steel. Doesn't look massively safe. No, not at all. <laughs> After installing these huge hidden tanks, skimmer gangs go back to the gas station and fill them up at the pump, paying for the gas with your stolen credit cards. Look at where this guy has inserted the pump nozzle. It's up so high it can access that secret compartment. I would never expect someone to go to that much trouble. It's, it's, it's the next step. They then transfer the gas to a regular tanker and make what looks like a legit delivery to a crooked gas station owner. Voila, gas or cash. Eight to ten million dollars a year. Eight to ten million dollars a year. The cops in LA County say they're pulling over trucks like this at a rate of one a week. So what on earth can you do to protect yourself and your credit card digits? Well, there's no point looking at the pump for clips. You would just never know. Never. There's no way of knowing. No way of knowing. You are watching the clips. So going through that, that presentation, it's very evident that skimming is a national problem. Um, what used to be contained in the uh, in local news, local newspapers, and was something that was fairly rare, is now making the uh, national news sweep. And if you can take a look at this, skimming is not just part of Florida, it's not just part of Texas or, or Southern California, but skimmers are now popping up all over the United States. Uh, a month and a half ago, I, had the, um, I was able to, to present on skimmers along with the FBI in Lexington, Kentucky. And uh, two, two agents who were working in that group um, detailed to me how a Lexington, Kentucky group had started there and then was uh, branching out very quickly. And they had actually put their skimmers out all the way across the interstate corridor out to Colorado and up into Minnesota. So gangs are, are, are spreading out as skimmers and, and as retailers are locking down their dispensers, the, the, the gangs just move along and they, they, they branch out across the United States. Um, certainly your brand is at stake. Uh, what happens when a skimmer is found in your, in your location? The local news will jump on top of that and your station does get named. And I, I look at uh, Google every day for uh, news on skimmers and increasingly the local news is, is putting the street address, the owner, of the uh, station, the brand of that station uh, in the local press so that everybody can react and check their statements. What they're trying to tell consumers are if you've, been if you've used your card at this location, 
you need to go and check your bank statement. So they're doing a public service, but in that, they're also linking that location to, to the theft. And the consumers are not always very benevolent about that, that, uh, that incident. They see us as being uh, not too responsive to taking care of their security needs. The devices that you saw in the video, here are some other devices that have been pulled out of fuel pumps. Bottom line is, is that these devices come in all, ways, all forms. They're not made by one singular manufacturer. They're made in basements and they're made and they're purchased online from uh, various manufacturers who just cob these together. So when we say you check your dispenser for skimmers, it's very, very difficult to decide what's a skimmer and what isn't. The other thing is, is overlays, and hopefully we've gone away from a lot of the, the membrane overlays, but that's another way that uh, skimmers can get to what is really the holy grail of skimming a, a, a card number, which is I want to get a debit card and I also want to get the PIN number on that debit card, because once I've done that, I don't even have to buy merchandise to fence to monetize that card. I can go in and I can take, I can go to an ATM and take money out of that account. And we're seeing more and more of these mass ATM exfiltrations of, of cash around the world. They're easy to get, of course, if you go into the dark web, and it doesn't even have to be that dark. You can contact folks across the world to pull out skimmers, and you can even buy the necessary components online at eBay. And there's not really anything that can be done legally to keep these things from being sold on eBay. But uh, somebody can uh, easily go in and purchase a skimmer to, to put into a dispenser or to put it at a point of sale terminal. I want to turn this over to uh, Luke Grant from Gilbarco who's going to take us through on the low cost, um, the low cost practices that can be uh, used to protect your island. Luke? Thanks, Greg. Uh, again, this is Luke Grant, Director of Payments with Gilbarco. Um, we're now just going to go through a couple slides on low-cost options you can do to combat skimming on the port court today because, as, as you've heard in, in Gray's tee-up comments, it's certainly not the type of problem you want to delay in addressing. Uh, later in the webinar, Tim Weston from Wayne will cover other advancements in security technology that you can also consider investing in for the future to help you get and cover things that you can do today without making large investments. You know, first thing you can do immediately is train your sales associates and your store personnel with, uh, with the information we're covering today on how to identify the signs that skimming might be happening on your forecourt. Uh, with, a, with as big of an issue as this is becoming and the potential impact on your sites, you should absolutely implement these practices quickly as standard policy for your entire team. For your sales associates and cashiers, they can definitely watch out for things like high levels of bad card reads or dispenser offline messages, which are, are not common during normal, normal operation and can be indications that someone is either attempting to install or has installed an, an internal skimming device, as Gray mentioned about earlier. They should also be on the lookout for suspicious activities on the sites, things like vehicles parked at the pump for extended periods of time which can be an indication that someone is either trying to gain access to the dispenser or has installed, uh, installed a skimming device, an external skimming device. And these thieves have been known to present themselves often as authorized service technicians that are on site for quote unquote unscheduled work. So to help thwart those types of attacks, you can train your associates to really be vigilant in checking the identification of any technician that comes on site and making sure that all technician visits are actually scheduled and confirmed. Um, and to make implementing this as easy as possible, we recommend that you create some reference sheets that you can post, for instance, near your point of sale terminals that cover the types of things that your cashiers can look for and how they should react if suspicious activity is spotted. Next slide, Greg. Next thing you can do is train your store personnel to perform daily inspections of your sites and your dispensers to look for signs of possible skimming. Uh, in particular, looking for signs of forced entry into the dispensers, such as scra scratches or cuts around door locks and panels. Those, those can be indications that someone has gained authorized access inside the dispenser and installed an internal skimming device. Now, earlier in the webinar, you saw some pictures of the overlay skimming devices that can look just like the actual card reader or the real keypad. And to identify these types of devices, your associates can look for things like abnormally protruding surfaces that are not flush with the door panels of the dispenser. And by becoming familiar with that normal layout of the dispenser door, 
your associates can help spot devices like overlay skimmers and even cameras that might be installed in a variety of positions around the door panel to capture things like a consumer's PIN number. Also, maintaining a good line of sight with all of your dispensers is important for spotting individuals that might be engaged in inst installing a skimming device. And if you've got an extremely large forecourt, like potentially a Bucky site out in Texas, you might even consider having a roaming associate that can periodically monitor the activities on the site. And if you find out about skimmers being discovered at other locations near your sites, it's a good idea to go out immediately and inspect your own dispensers because in many cases these thieves are operating and will operate in specific regions and target those areas. Next slide. So beyond the actions that your own store personnel can take, you can also go to the experts and work with your equipment providers like Gilbarco and Wayne to help protect your sites through regular inspections. Both dispenser manufacturers have large networks of hundreds of service technicians that are trained and authorized to work on our dispensers and really understand the details and complexities of the electronics associated with the payment terminals. As, as well as they know, in general, what some of these skimming devices are looking like because they're constantly in contact with both Gilbarco and Wayne or up to date on, on what the latest skimming devices are, are coming out as. And so these experts are much more capable at quickly identifying a skimming device versus potentially your own store personnel knowing what to look for. And they're also going to be able to really see what looks legitimate and what may be a foreign device. You should also provide the right contact lists and escalation paths uh, to these experts, to your store personnel, and give them the freedom to request an on-site inspection if they believe that there might have been some suspicious activity at the site. And lastly, you can also work with your equipment provider on establishing a baseline of equipment on your sites. Many of you probably have a wide variety of, the, wide variety of dispenser types and payment terminal types across your network that have grown over time and dispensers can range from 20 years old to uh, dispensers you bought last year. And these dispensers have a variety of different electronic sets. So partnering with your service provider to help get your site up to a common level of electronics across your sites. Tim's going to talk in a couple minutes about making those investments in security. And while, while you're assessing those, thinking about getting a common level of technology across your sites or common platforms will help both your store personnel and your authorized service technicians know what, they're looking, know what they're looking for on your sites and know when inconsistencies are found. So those are some low cost things you can do and I'm going to turn it over to Doug to talk a little bit about uh, our decal programs. Thank you. This is uh, Doug Spencer with uh, Nax Products and Services. Just wanted to continue along with the theme of some low cost options uh, to prevent skimming. Uh, Nax and Connexus have put together a program and develop these We Care official uh, tamper evident decals. Um, you place these on the card readers over the seams of the doors, and any time that they're violated, you'll see the void uh, open um, markings show up on the decal. Um, it's just it it's just it's not a, a, a cure all. It's not a, the final solution, but it's a very low cost entry for people who do not know uh, where to start and where to kind of tackle this problem. Um, so don't know who has been in your pumps, when and why. Uh, you can log your tags by pump position and justify each change in date. Uh, visually influence the potential criminal activity, uh, just to let people know that you care about uh, the security and the, and, and the security at the pump. Um, showing your customers this, the same level of concern that you have uh, that you have some concerns. We've we've had some calls into NACS about people that have pulled up to a station and there'd be ten pumps there, and all ten would have decals and they'd all been violated. Um, and they just don't know what to do in that situation. And those are um, one of those things that's probably better off not doing it if you're not going to be able to um, uh, to track and to uh, successfully uh, follow the the decals. Uh, maintain evidentiary data for potential, potential uh, forensic purposes. When the police come, and um, you can say that I put this decal on at a certain date and a certain time, but this certain rep did it, and we re recognize that it's uh, been violated then, you can really help with timelines um, and match up to your security cameras. Um, provide method for complying with new PCI asset tracking rules, just to show that you've made some, some efforts in this direction um, to care about people's ID. Um, there's the website for uh, NaxOnline.com. Nax and Connexus have a bunch of resources on 
other things to do as far as um, skimming is concerned, but this is where you could go and, and purchase these uh, tamper evident decals. Um, we've also worked with a partner at Pinnacle Corporation developing a Skim Defend app. This is just an app that anybody that you um, want can have this app on their phone, and this goes back to the previous slides, talk about a roaming person, a roaming personnel where you can go and have someone at, at any inc uh, increments of, of your choosing um, scan the island and go and just take a picture of the decal at the pump and then log whether or not it's intact, not intact, and then you can kind of send that information to the cloud and then you can have a um, a resource to go back and say that this, um, the track who's been in and when, um, and instead it's a little bit more of a uh, official functionality to just having the, the decals and having some sort of uh, log book, a three ring binder, this kind of automates that um, in a multiple location site can use this to, to feed all this data up to a, um, a mainframe so one person can track everything that's going on. So uh, digitally tracking all the current intrusions um, per per permitted or are not permitted. Uh, once again, the forensic evidence and the, the PCI guidelines. Now, one thing that um, before I pass it on, the uh, this is like I said, this is not a cure-all solution. Um, these decals, we are doing everything we can to make sure we monitor who can purchase these. Um, there, that's not a, a foolproof option. And also, when you have rolls of these laying around in a store, um, you know we don't like to talk about it, but employees can have access to these um, and 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 you can get them out of your way. So once again, the, the app is a really um, good way to make sure that um, the decals that you put in use are the ones that are, are being monitored. Um, and once again, all the uh, entries are being tracked back to a, a centralized database. And we'll be passing on for the next part, investing in your security. Thanks, Doug. Uh, Tim Weston here with Wayne Fueling Systems. Um, there's also you know a look at um, some of your higher fraud locations or taking your defenses to the next level. Um, next slide, please. One of the things that um, the themes and discussions we've had from Luke and Doug so far, um, that really re these activities and these procedures and the like uh, are focused primarily on detecting and reducing the amount of time uh, between a device would be installed and actually detecting that it's there. Um, there's, there's a couple other aspects when you look at the overall defense picture. It's moving beyond detecting access and also trying to prevent uh, the original intrusions in the first place. Uh, and then thirdly, being able to actually eliminate the data that these uh, criminals are after. So as so we look at investing further into the dispensers, there are other things that can be added to help uh, round out the overall defense picture being uh, prevention. And one of those first and simple things can be doing things like moving to um, keyed locks on the dispensers that have site unique key sets. Uh, the video you saw in the story represented a common key across many dispensers across the country. Um, one easy way to invest in that is to, to move into your site unique locks, uh, whether they're site specific or even across the chain of your, you know, if you have multiple locations, maybe you have a set of locks um, for your um, series of sites. Uh, both manufacturers and even third parties offer different locking solutions. So that can step up the, the security a little higher to help prevent the access in the first place. And then looking from a good, better, best approach, you can take it to the next level and actually add solutions that help electronically uh, monitor when any access occurs. Uh, the things like a dispenser access alarm system, one that is locally um, detects any intrusions from an unauthorized uh, provider, service provider or a, a criminal getting into the dispensers. Uh, beyond having a, tech, a store associate check the fact that that happened, these types of solutions that have access alarms built into them can shut down the dispenser immediately, make it go offline to the point of sale system, thereby alerting some of the store associates inside, and then also even setting off an audible alarm, much like you'd see with a car alarm system uh, and for your automobiles. Those types of solutions uh, can immediately help um, deter the thefts, thieves and have them uh, you know, move on to another location for fear of being detected by other consumers or the store personnel. And then the more advanced versions even have remote monitoring systems where uh, service technicians or other store managers can be alerted through text messages the moment that those types of intrusions happen. Um, beyond those upgrades to the dispensers themselves, it can also include things like uh, video surveillance systems. Again, adding to the ability for forensics data, get some visuals on the guys that are there, 
even if they're not able to successfully get in the dispensers, you've got video surveillance that can help law enforcement to follow up and find out if these guys are, you know, running in groups or if they can actually build a case against the uh, the criminals that are getting into the dispensers. Um, next slide beyond that is actually um, uh, one of the items. Sorry, I forgot was the lighting as well. You know, well lit forecourt helps support those video systems um, and helps to deter guys from uh, attacking this particular site versus another one that doesn't have video systems or well uh, lit forecourts. Then you can move to um, beyond the defending preventing access to quickly detecting it to actually take away the data that the folks are after. Upgrading the payment terminals themselves with uh, secure card readers that encrypt and protect the data immediately upon swipe can help uh, eliminate the threat uh, even more completely than the other methods. Um, so hybrid chip card readers or the ones that are used commonly for EMV upgrades, those are also uh, secure bank stretch card readers. So they, they actually help defend against the data um, being accessed with the most common ways described like in that video with uh, skimmers attached to the back of the card readers or on cables in between the, the, the components within the cabinet. These types of solutions actually lock down that data with security and encrypted communications between those components. In addition to the card readers uh, and the benefits they provide for the skimming, it also ties into some of the scope reduction uh, with PCI for compliance audits and complements the keypads that are part of the PCI program that have helped eliminate the pin skimming that uh, Luke described and some of those other solutions. This combination of the security of these card readers, the secure electronics, and even the encrypting keypads rounds out the complete and highest level of security for an investment into the payment terminals. So as you can see between those um, levels, it can be as simple as low-cost methods that require the human element and procedures to be able to detect the solutions and then you can move all the way up to actually investing in the equipment out there to help it defend and monitor its own uh, intrusions rather than relying on the personnel to uh, is your complete solution. And in summary on that group, it kind of comes down to four areas. On the next slide, please. Detecting whenever the systems are intruded, uh, any times that things happen or any detection of uh, the, uh, the criminals getting into the dispensers, uh, being able to run those inspections, uh, doing the, the um, routine checks on that and identifying whether there's any abnormalities or uh, new things that are different, uh, protecting the system as a whole with the upgrade systems, taking away the opportunity to get that data in the first place, and then of course working on the reporting and working with your service providers uh, and folks, it's a complex thing. Uh, we've seen um, the Secret Service and law enforcement you know, continually bring back information on new types of skimmers they're finding, new technologies being deployed. Um, it, it's difficult for everyone to keep up with all the latest iterations of skimming new technologies. So whenever you're in doubt, you know, have a technician check it out. They'll be able to more easily identify what's legitimate hardware and what's not supposed to be inside the dispenser. So with that, I'll pass it back to Greg. Thanks, Tim. Uh, this is all great information here. Um, the uh, I think what you what what we've learned in this in this uh, webinar so far is, is is that it really doesn't take many steps to protect yourself from from uh, skimmers being injected into your your dispensers and having your brand really really uh, damaged. Um, I've fielded more than a few questions from from retailers over the last couple of years. Um, who've called me on a Monday morning and said, you know what, uh, we found a skimmer over the weekend, or um, the police showed up at my door first thing this morning to tell me that a skimmer has been pulled out of one of my locations. And it's probably one of the most depressing things you can face at the opening of a business day. So really what you're dealing with is, is, a, is disaster management, especially if you're in a small town, you're a single site operator, um, you know, you've built up trust over the years. and some things that are just really key in dealing with any any disaster, any public relations disaster that you might have to deal with is there's a right way and a wrong way. The right way is, you know, you want to cooperate with authorities. Um, remember this, you're a victim in a two-step crime, but many people are not going to see that you are the victim. And when I say it's a two-step crime, it is from a standpoint of stealing that, that uh, card information, that's step one, monetizing it, is step two, and that's where they're buying gas from the video you saw, where they'll put it into skid tanks and so forth. 
people will have will have a lot of sympathy when you're when you're uh, part of the step two. But step one, they start to see you as being complicit. I've had conversations with uh, secret U.S. Secret Service where they were believing that we weren't doing enough and that that we were being complicit by inactivity. And I think the things that were laid out by Luke and by Doug and by Tim show that you know we can do furtive actions to make sure that people understand we're taking care of them. But you get skin. Cooperate with the authorities. Go out of your way. Do not hide behind your door and refuse to work with the authorities. Open communication. Uh, if somebody comes to talk to you, uh, especially if it's local press, talk to those folks and make clear that they understand that you were doing everything you could, that you care about the consumer's uh, security, uh, and that this is a crime that you're also part of. Don't go hiding into your office because we've all seen the 60 Minutes moment where people shut the door in 60 minutes pretty much eviscerates them. So you want to make sure you talk to the press. Be ready to admit fault. If you have, if, if, if you were, if you didn't, uh, if you, if you weren't sc uh, scanning your, uh, your tags out on your dispenser or, or something, you know, something fell through from a procedural standpoint, be ready to say, look, you know, we could have done a better job on that. Don't just stand behind victimhood, even though you are a victim. Take furtive actions to cure this. Again, working with the authorities and making sure that you reach out to your customers. Uh, the wrong way to do things is, you know, leave leave all your tags still out there looking like they've been uh, there for four or five years. I mean, uh, to uh, Doug's earlier point, I actually went to a site in, in Rochester, New York, uh, and I was late for a flight, and every one of the tags on the on the dispensers was broken. And I was absolutely convinced. I didn't have time to go to another station, but I was absolutely convinced I was going to get skimmed. And so, um, make make the changes that you need to have uh, to do. Genuine concern. Make sure that you express to the pub, to the to the press that you really do care about the consumers and that you want to do everything that you can uh, to to uh, help those folks who are affected. Some immediate actions: disable and bag both sides of the pump. If you suspect a, a, a skimmer is in there, make sure that customers aren't attempting sales and don't tamper with the dispenser. Now, there's some some there are some some guidelines here. Um, don't tamper with the dispenser, but call the local law enforcement. Request an investigation to have them remove the skimmer, if at all possible. Provide a copy of the inspection logs. Uh, request a copy of the police report and keep that. Make sure it's correct. Correct it if it's not. Now, we've had some folks say, well, what happens if the police don't come over uh, you know, fast or quickly to, to remove that skimmer, or at least supervise the tech removing that skimmer? Um, you know, at some point, you'll have to take that out. And the way to take that skimmer out is to make sure that you're not putting your prints all over the place. Because as you saw in that video, these people are coming in and they're leaving prints behind. And the police and Secret Service and the FBI are definitely tracking these people as they go across. Because they're trying to build, build cases on these gangs as they get bigger and bigger and bigger. So if, you're, if, if the police cannot respond in time, use a plastic bag. Uh, put on rubber gloves if you have them, and take the skimmer out of your dispenser. Uh, the tech will probably be equipped to do that, and the tech will then be equipped to put the dispenser back into, into uh, activity. Contact your supplier, brand, or franchise. Now, this is another thing. We've worked with a lot of the major oil brands. They all have risk assessment folks, and um, they tend to be the last people that people call when they find a skimmer. But the brands themselves are also trying to uh, ensure that if they find a skimmer within a, uh, within a trading area, that they're going to let their other branded locations know that there have been skimmers found. So trust with your brand. Get with your supplier, your, your marketer, and, and make sure that they understand that you found a skimmer. The customers. Now, the customers can, are, can, be, can be very unforgiving on this, and so it's going to take a lot of patience. First thing is, is empathize. This may be financially devastating to these folks, uh, especially if it's a debit card that's been used with a PIN. Uh, each one of those transactions that they want to challenge subsequent to that skimming event is going to have to be challenged under Regulation E. This is going to be a very big thing for them to deal with. Inform them. Okay? Make sure that your upfront staff understands what went through, what was the synopsis of the events, and the steps that you've taken to prevent this from happening again. And assure them. Have a demonstrable plan that outlines steps being taken. 
have your folks at the front end tell walk them through about how that you guys are going to be inspecting twice a day and how the, you're keeping your tags on the dispensers uh, fresh and up to date. Staff, don't ever underestimate all of the things that your staff is going to have to go through. They're, these are the people who know these people, your customers, they see them every day and they have to deal with them, especially the ones that have read about it in the news. So they'll be dealing with the backlash. Have them refer all in-depth inquiries to a designated person within your organization. And if it's a single site operator, have them contact the owner. Provide a short script of what they're going to tell the customers, but don't get into detail because your people are there to sell and service your customers, not there to, to, to uh, describe all of the gory details of the skimming event. And then recognize the staff that found the device. Uh, all too often, we, we, we pass that off, but you want to make heroes out of these people because that goes back to the cultural changes you're going to need to make to make sure that, that your staff is doing what you need to do to protect yourselves. In dealing with the aftermath in the press, don't hide from the inquiries or the interviews. Come off as a victim. Be affiliative, not defensive or angry, and express concern for your customers. Explain your preventative policies and actions and explain you are working with authorities. Go back to uh, that, that station owner in the video, um, he accepted the fact that it happened and he was there to inform people on how to make sure that didn't happen to other folks. So with that, I'm going to open it up to uh, questions. Um, rem uh, hopefully if you have any, uh, some, any open questions that you'd like to send to us, please uh, text them in and um, uh, we can answer them uh, as they come in. Thanks, Gray. And while we're waiting for the questions to come in, uh, just a couple items to note. I know that uh, Doug from Nax had mentioned the We Care program, and the We Care program um, goes 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 beyond you know just just dispenser skimming, but it actually helps you um, in the basic steps to becoming PCI compliant. It certainly does not make you PCI compliant, but I think it gives you a pretty good overview of of the bigger picture of PCI compliance. And um, as, as Gray Taylor from Connexus had just talked about, the incident response plan, there there's a webinar that Connexus had back in August on responding, responding to a data breach. And um, since August and going forward, all of the Connexus webinars that, that, um, that you enjoy each month are recorded and posted on YouTube. So if you subscribe to the Connexus channel, You'll get notified each time that there's a new update, but you can go back and listen to that incident response webinar as well. Great. So, I don't see any questions coming in. There's a there, on the right side of your screen for the webinar panel. There is a question section. If you click on the plus sign, the box should open, and you could type in your questions there. So I'd like to pose a question to the group. Um, with the advent of EMB coming down, and you know we've we've we we've, we've gotten a bit of a reprieve on the EMB liability shift deadlines. Do we see EMB is eradicating? Um, and I'm going to open this up to to uh, Luke and to, to Tim. Does, do we see EMB eradicating skimming in the retail space, especially at the uh, fuel dispenser? And this is Luke. Maybe I'll touch on that a little bit. When you know, when Tim talked about you know, some of the investments he's making in security technology, he, he spoke about the card readers that are coming on today's payment platforms, card readers that actually encrypt uh, payment information within the CRIN. Those types of platforms that you know are coming out on uh, with EMV um, generally eliminate the possibility of internal skimming devices. So getting in behind the card reader and trying to steal the data there. So absolutely, as you as we see the market continue to move because there's a lot of the market that has already bought EMV capable terminals and despite the, the three year delay in the liability shift date, a lot of the market is going to continue to turn on EMV at the pump next year and continue to make rollouts. A lot of the large retailers want to continue moving quickly and, and much of the market will continue moving quickly. As those sites get the upgraded terminals with the card readers that help protect them from skimming, the bad guys are just going to find other sites to go and try to do skimming at. And they're, so they're going to go to the sites that have not made those upgrades. So I, yes, definitely see that, that 
getting EMV capable hardware, especially those those more encrypting secure card readers out in the market, is going to eliminate a lot of the skimming. It's also going to make it worse for the folks that, that delay out further on into the 2019-2020 range to make the uh, the shift to EMV technology. And Tim, do you have uh, any other thoughts there? Yeah, that's great information, Luke. I think I can add to that. You know, the uh, and confirm you know, on the. The, the Wayne provided uh, hybrid chip card readers, as we talked about, they do provide that that local um, tamper response to uh, any intrusions, as well as a local encryption of the data. Uh, one thing I would add is that the, the technology these criminals are using today to skim the data is based on um, skimming the card data on serial-based traffic. You know, the, the, the technologies and the communication between dispensers and indoor uh, site controllers is a serial-based solution. So. Technology-wise, it's not that complicated to skim. One of the things that, you know, making the migration to EMV-based terminals is also moving to an IP-based protocol to communicate between the dispensers and the indoor site controllers. And moving to those IP-based uh, technologies also affords the opportunity for some encryption of that data across the IP network. So it, it further um, complicates the efforts that the criminals would have to take to skim the data. You know, the one, it's encrypted within the reader, and then two, communication changes over and uh, is, can be encrypted as well through technologies like TLS or uh, you know encrypted uh, tunnels and that kind of stuff. So um, most definitely I think the migration for, for folks looking at a, a immediate benefit for looking at EMV upgrade paths is that they do get some protection against this type of skimming fraud and further protection uh, even prior to going lights on with actual EMV transactions. Um, we will see this uh, I think significantly changed the landscape for skimmers in the market. Great. Thanks, gentlemen. We do have a question that's out there. And um, the question is, is there any obligation to notify your card processor when a skimmer is found? So from a PCI perspective, the answer is yes. Because even if you think that you may have had any sort of data compromise relative to payment cards, you are required to notify your payment processor or your or your acquirer. So, um, is there any other thoughts from from any of our our speakers on the line regarding that? So, so my experience in dealing with law enforcement is is that they see notification as as a indication of of contrition, um, and I think the card brands also look at it that way. Um, in the cases where there's been uh, penalties assessed towards retailers that I'm aware of. They've been in situations where the card skimmer uh, has been installed for quite a long time. And what they do is they calculate, obviously, how many uh, potential cards could have been compromised, uh, especially if they can re recover the device and, and see. And, and, and the rule of thumb is about 90 transactions a day on a, a dispenser can be captured and forwarded on to somebody else. Um, again, that goes back to that full cooperation. Um, if you understand, in my opinion, that you are a victim of a crime and therefore it is your obligation to report that crime to the, the appropriate authorities, and in this case the authorities also include your acquirer, um, I think it's the best, the best practice you can take is when you find out, notify the police, get the police report, notify your acquirer so that it's you who are telling them rather than Visa or MasterCard fraud departments triangulating stolen card numbers back to your location and contacting you. Thank you, Gray. All right, we've had no further questions come in and we're close to the top of the hour. Are there any um, additional comments? I think, um, Gray, are there any additional slides after this? No, there aren't. No, okay. We will follow up with a um, with the survey. Uh, please go through and, and hit the survey. Cara, thank you for mentioning the uh, the YouTube channel because we're going to be populating all of our presentations up there so that you can reference them at your leisure down the road. And um, we'll be coming out with more and more information. Especially, uh, we'll be focusing on uh, more about uh, EMV and other data security issues as we go ahead in the, into the new year. Great, great. We do, uh, as a little bit of self-plugging here, we do have some forthcoming webinars in January. So uh, January we're going to be focusing on the Level 4 requirements, which is the, the PCI DSS validation, because Level 4 merchants have always been required to 
the PCI compliant, but they haven't had to validate, so that becomes effective January 31st. And also the uh, PCI QIR certified technician requirement that's also effective January 31st. So that, that webinar will happen in January. And I want to say that that date is the 12th or 19th, but, um, but don't, don't quote me on that. But we'll be sending out a notification. And also in February, to follow that up, we will be hearing from, of our, some, from some of our experts on how to become PCI DSS compliant so that you can follow up with a new requirement in case you're not familiar. So with that, I'm going to close the webinar and thank everybody for attending and have a great day. Thank you all.